Iowa City in that large bid. Their record against tournament teams, seven and four. Tom Davis, his 10th season in Iowa, never lost in the first round in eight previous trips to the NCAAs. And look at Mike Jarvis. Mike Jarvis, one of the outstanding coaches in college basketball. You can see his sixth season at George Washington. He had his team in the Sweet 16 in 1993, would like nothing better than to get back there. And a look at our starting lineups. For Iowa, Millard settles and Murray the front line. Andre Woolridge and Glasper will play the two. GW, it's cool with Vaughn Jones and J.J. Braid. Kwame Evans, as we mentioned, GW's leading scorer. Shante Rogers, he's the five foot three inch freshman. Montier Glasper. This will be a very interesting matchup in a lot of ways, but particularly when you think about it, as you look at Shante Rogers, particularly down low with the big guys. And, and by the way, Shante Rogers earlier in the season was the second leading rebounder for GW. There's a lot of interesting aspects to this game, Bill, and I think one of them is Iowa is the team that really likes to pressure. George Washington with Shante Rogers is a team that can react to pressure very well. They've got Kwame Evans, if he gets open in transition, can really drill the three-point shot. Iowa, even though they don't have a, a guy as tall as Alexander Kuhl, they're number four in the country and rebound margin. They do a great job on the backboards. This has the potential to really be an entertaining basketball game. And our crew for this one, Andre Patillo, Sam Croft, and Curtis Shaw. And as we mentioned, Tom Davis has never lost the first-round game in the NCAA tournament. And Tom Davis has to hope that the omens aren't bad for him here in Tempe because the University of Maryland and Gary Williams had never lost a first-round game in the NCAA tournament, but they fell earlier to Santa Clara. So Mar those streaks don't mean a thing. Maryland, uh, that, they were working on the NCAA record. 12 straight first-round wins, and that ended today, so that'll be the record that others will have a chance to shoot for. There's Alexander Cool, 7-1 sophomore from Belarus. He'll jump against Russ Millard. GW controls the tip. And here's Rogers. And Iowa starts in the man-to-man. -man. Jones. Evans will take the three. Millard comes away with it. Glasper giving Evans an awful lot of room out on the perimeter. And Kwame Evans, if he gets hot, Montier Glasper's going to have to get closer to him than that. Man-to-man -man for George Washington as well. Millard inside is the second leading scorer for Iowa. Very powerful inside player. It'll be interesting to see how he matches up against Alexander Kuhl. Kuhl sometimes tends to be a little bit passive early in games to try to stay out of foul trouble. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Woodridge pulls up. Evans with the rebound. Off quickly to Rogers. Got a three on one. Rogers stops. That's a two. Iowa noted for transition basketball that George Washington can get it up and down as well. They get out to Millard. He shoots a three and knocks it down. That's a place where Iowa would really like to go. Millard can bring Cool away from the basket with his three-point shooting ability. Millard shooting 39% from three-point range, 60% shooter overall. Settles comes down with it. And a man for the Colonials. Note Millard out high. Woolwich. Last touch by GW. Plus Millard, the 50-year senior. I think he's going to have some success against Alexander Poole if he'll put the ball on the floor and try to go past him. Uh, he tried to get it to Kenyon Murray, and Iowa with the turnover.
Tough pass inside by Millard, but he's already established for Alexander Cool that he can shoot that three-point shot. Now, if he can establish putting on the deck and going by Cool, it may give the big guy something to think about. Jones, pretty much uncontested. So GW out to the 4-3 early lead. Iowa will pressure that time little half-court trap and George Washington beat it and the Colonials have some guys who can shoot the basketball a Good example of the quickness of Shante Rogers Settles Evans with the rebound That's a tough matchup inside for George Washington telling the official he thought Evans was hit on that play. Millard from way outside. That's six for Millard. Rodgers quickly pushes it up the floor. He'll take the three. And he and runs down the rebound. He's so that's, quick. That's one of the reasons why he can get all those rebounds. He just uses his quickness, and Braid is going to be called for an offensive foul. Using the left hand to push off. Mike Jarvis, one of the most expressive faces in college basketball, doesn't like that particular sequence. Braid throws out at that arm to ward off Millard. That's a good call. 17-04 left in the first half. The Hawkeyes lead by two. Alvin Robertson in, Robinson in the game for Russ Millard. Poole does not have to come out and contest Robinson out beyond the three-point line. Hit the side of the glass. This is Murray. Scramble for it. GW comes away. This is Evans. They have the numbers. Evans takes it. And he's fouled. That's the first on Woolrich. So Evans goes to the line, 74% foul shooter. He holds all of the GW three-point shooting records. And speaking of three-point shooters, Chris Kingsbury coming into the game. Kingsbury, Iowa's leading three-point shooter in terms of three-point baskets made, although his percentage is way down this year. That one doesn't go. Settles comes away with it. Iowa by one. Woolridge trying to post up Shante Rogers. Settles with that quick step and lays it in. The first basket of the night for Settles. And GW's back in a hurry. And there's Settles with another rebound. What a great job to run the court. Woolridge. Down low to Murray. He's surrounded. Kingsbury, that won't go. Cool with the rebound. Great outlet pass. Evans. Vaughn Jones was fouled, taking it to the hoop. And Tom Davis sends in a contingent. Glasper back in. J.R. Koch in. Ryan Bowen in. Koch, the 6'10 freshman. And uh, Bowen, who was actually starting before he was injured against Michigan State, he broke a bone in his left hand, missed Iowa's last five games. And you see he's now playing with a, a soft cast. free throw shooter he knocks down the second 8-6 Iowa we're back in Tempe and there's the uh, tall and the short of it for GW Alexander cool who goes 7-1 and Shante Rogers at 5-3 Rogers kind of uh, reminds me of one of those old 45s you know that uh, somebody occasionally will play at 78 he's just so fast 
so much faster than everybody else around him. He's a guy who can handle the ball very effectively and can really be a pest on defense. Early in the game, the biggest factor has been the large three-point shooting. Well, under 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Glasper. Kingsbury saves it. She's caught. She no, he didn't get it off. Shot clock time. George Washington is a solid defensive ball club. And they're a deep ball club. This is Yegor Misharikov. Another one of those guys from Mike Jarvis from Belarus. From Minsk, a 6'8 freshman. He's an outstanding shooter. They really expect a lot of great things from him in his career. He's an outstanding athlete. He can run, he can handle the basketball, and you're right, he can shoot it. Rattles around, doesn't go. Oh, and how physical is it inside? Hawkeyes of Iowa from the Big Ten where they're not afraid to play physically. And there's Russ Millard. That's three three-point baskets. And he has nine. And the Colonials are going to have to consider guarding him. Rodgers. Jay Bray, Musharikov. Iowa really packing it inside on the defense. It looks like they're going to force George Washington to shoot it over the top. And Millard thought about it. Dishes it off. Three seconds. It's the fourth Iowa turnover, only one for GW. And Alexander Cool finds himself in the unfamiliar position of trying to defend somebody on the perimeter. Jess Settles comes back in, as does Andre Woolrich. Kingsbury sits. Iowa up by five. 14-22 left to go in the first half. Evans. Short, Settles comes away with it. George Washington not able to get the buckets from the perimeter early. Kwame Evans in particular, Cole. Man-to-man -man defense for the Colonials. Glasper, give it to Woolrich. He'll reset it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 15 seconds. And George Washington has made a defensive change. Vaughn Jones now matched up against Millard. Settles. And look who was in there battling for it. Shante Rogers at 5-3. He gets most of his off the deck. If he's going to have to jump for him, he's overmatched. Woolrich, fade away. That's a tough shot. And there's Russ Millard. Now he's matched up against Jones, who's only 6-5. He jumps right over him to get the rebound. Millard really creating matchup problems for George Washington. Settles, there's Bowen. Settles will take it. Gets his own rebound. Good quickness. Misharikov just didn't block him out. Iowa, we mentioned, does a great job on the boards. Almost nine rebounds a game more than their opponents, and that's the kind of pace they're on. Right now holding a 12 to 5 rebounding edge. Shot clock is under 10 now. Warwick won't go. Cool gets up there to rip it down. The big guy looks for the little guy. That was a very athletic play by Kwame Evans. Misharikov. Oh, another blocked shot. That's Bowen who blocked the shot. Misharikov has had two blocked. Woolwich. Oh, they're going to count that basket as well. Panic. On 
Andre Woolridge gets by Shante Rogers in transition, commits the foul, and then Kwame Evans hits the ball while it's up on the iron. No question about it. So Woolridge will go to the line. 74% foul shooter. with their pressure. But this is a hard Here hit comes pressure. GW with Rodgers. Jones to cool. He jams it. And the guy can run the court. Oh, what a pass. Right back. Woolwich finds Murray. Sixteen eight Iowa. The sheriff off. To Jones. It's five now for Jones. Kingsbury with the three. Hawkeyes hitting on all cylinders right at the moment. They've got the game right at the pace where they would like it. Tom Davis over on the bench encouraging the troops. Slow it down now. Hawkeyes playing a matchup zone. They've got somebody in front and somebody behind. Big Alexander Poole. We'll oh. see why. Grabs the handle and lays it up and in. 19-12 Iowa. Nice soft hand. Kingsbury. Woolrich gets the rebound. George Washington just being battered on the board. Offensive rebound. Settle started by Cool. Cool with the quick hands. Take a look at the boards. 15 to 6 for Iowa. Oh, nice assist. Big guy Alexander Cool is dragging out there. Rogers. Big guys for Iowa really creating some problems out on the perimeter for George Washington. Here, Kingsbury beats Misharikov. Settles just goes to the basket when Cool goes to help. Settles has the easy lane. Well, several substitutions, and Cool will take a rest. He struggled up the floor in that last possession. The pace of this game has really been something up and down basketball. Vaughn Jones now, the 6'5 senior from DeMatha High School in Washington. 71% free throw shooter. One of three from the line tonight. One of four. And it seems as if Iowa has claimed every rebound. Murray. Forces the turnover. Nine fifty-one left to go in the first half. The Hawkeyes twenty-three twelve. Iowa out to an eleven-point lead as Tom Davis's wife looks on. Nine fifty-one. And Left Sherry Davis just as pleased with what's going on as her husband. <laughs> She's kind of getting into the music a little bit. Very relaxed. Now, meanwhile, GW is 0 of 4 from the three-point line. Iowa 4 of 6. Millard hit those three three-point baskets, and then Kingsbury came off the bench and hit one. Shante Rogers is going to pick up a foul there. And the net result of that, Bill, has been that that has stretched the George Washington's defense. And because their defense is stretched, there's been some driving lanes available for Iowa. And Iowa's also been doing a good job getting to the offensive boards. The first on Rodgers, the third team foul on GW. Last one. Cool comes away with it. Sherikov goes high to get that one. There's Rogers. 
Dan, who has GW played that would be comparable to Iowa? In the Atlantic 10, I don't know that there's anyone comparable to Iowa in terms of the combination of power and size inside and the ability to press and run the court. Obviously, UMass does a nice job getting up and down, and they're strong inside, but they don't have near the depth that Iowa, Tom Davis just keeps running guys in, and Mike Jarvis trying to encourage his troops a little bit, also to influence the referees. Here, Woolridge comes back. As Kingsbury uh, fails to answer the three by Rogers, so GW will take it, trailing 23 to 15. Rogers. What quickness! Uh -oh. Warwich down low. Oh, what a great outlet pass. Outlet to Braid. Nifty move inside. The great jump stop. George Washington cuts it to four. And Masherikov picks up a foul. He belted Koch going through the lane. Shante Rogers just hit the three. Koch has to come out and get him the good fake. Now watch as he hangs in the air and banks it in. What a move. Try the lob pass of Sells battling underneath. Cool from behind. I think they got Sells. Very, very aggressive play. Millard and Settles, boy, they just bang you in there. That's the second on Jess Settles. Cool. Off in a hurry to Braid. Great body control. Braid does a great job finishing on the fast break. George Washington now with a little pressure. That 11 point lead is now down to two. Braid. That is the second on the 6'5 freshman from Montreal. Timeout on the floor. Our score, Iowa 23, GW 21. A 9 nothing George Washington run has brought the Colonials back within two, and a big reason why a great outlet pass by Alexander Cool throws it out to J.J. Braid, the six foot five inch freshman running in transition very well. And Braid has been a big factor in this George Washington comeback, finishing plays in the fast break, Bill. GW has made four of their last four. Iowa has missed their last four. Bowen's shot doesn't go. That is so tough in the Unbelievable paint. Unbelievable intensity and strength on the inside by Jess Settle. This is Rogers. Oh, This little guy really showing you something here. Maybe got away with a walk right there, but that's okay. You got to let that play stand. Penetration into the lane. This is, the guy's only five feet three, but he's got great strength, and he showed you some of that strength right there. And a tremendous heart as he finishes the three-point play. And Bowen now, Woolrich. Iowa throws it away. 25-24, Iowa. 7-10 left to play in the first half. Evans. Millard comes away with it. Woolrich out to Settles. Reverse skit. Find the basket and Iowa will keep it. He almost made that shot. What a great catch by Settles to get that ball up on the board was amazing enough.
Iowa 25, George Washington 24. The Hawkeyes had an 11 point lead. But GW has come back, and this has been a very physical, intense, and well played game so far. This is little Shante Rogers. Won't go. Masherikov. Battle underneath. The foul on Cool. You know, these guys are playing hard enough, you'd think something was at stake here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Millard, nine points, three straight three-pointers. Rebound edge goes to Iowa. They're among the best in the nation. And there you see GW, only one of six on the three-point strike. Alexander Cool went pretty deep into the first half before he picked up his first foul. George Washington in his zone. Kingsbury. Down low and the turnover. Here comes Rogers. Tried to force it. Glasper was able to pick it up. See if he slows it down. He will. Rodgers really did try to force that one. He was trying to get it to Masherikov inside. Very widely spread zone. Boy, good defense by Cool to knock it away. Evans. He has three. And GW leads by one. Timeout Iowa with 5.31 left to play in the first half. That was a 20. There are some fellas on this court tonight who can finish plays in transition. We saw J.J. Braid from George Washington finish very strong with a couple of layups. And then we saw Kwame Evans with the bank shot for George Washington's lead. Now the winner here will take on either the number three seed Arizona or the Crusaders of Valparaiso. They play immediately after this game and already today Santa Clara and Kansas advancing to the second round and they'll meet on Sunday. GW on a 14 to 2 run in the last three and a half minutes and they lead by one. One of the big factors is they've been able to neutralize Iowa on the boards, and the Hawkeyes, it's been a while since they hit a three-point basket. Down low, Millard goes off the glass. That's 11 now for Millard. Rogers up the floor quickly. Pushes it very, very quickly. Iowa reacts well to get back. Down low to Cool. Oh, great strength. Millard will take another three, rips it. That's now four three-point baskets for Russ Millard. And 14 points. It's a two-point Iowa lead. Sherikov having a tough time getting the ball to go in the basket. There is that man again. And this is only the second time Kingsbury can't do the follow. Still has it. Finally off the glass. And suddenly the three-point basket and the offensive rebound have the Hawkeyes ahead by five. I was just so aggressive on those boards. It's tipped away. By Glasper. 32-28, Iowa. The Hawkeyes of Iowa among the best in the country rebounding the basketball. And one of the reasons is they just do not quit. As Millard misses the three-point basket, George Washington has it right. Wrong. Kingsbury comes up with it. Murray tips it. Kingsbury comes out and gets it again. 32-28, Iowa in white, George Washington 
in blue. Under 340 left to go in the first half. The Hawkeyes by four. Iowa went out to an 11 point lead. George Washington closed with a 14 to two run to go ahead, but now Iowa has reasserted control. Woolridge will set the offense. Guarded by 5-3, Shante Rogers gets the quick first step on Rogers. That's five now for Woolridge. Six point Iowa lead. Jones comes away with it. He gets it to Rogers. Rogers back to Evans. He'll shoot the three and knocks it down. And I'm sure Mike Jarvis very happy to see his leading scorer get off the mark from three-point range. Six now for Evans. Three-point Iowa lead. Nice defensive play from Evans. I tell you what, if you catch that ball down on the interior anyway, you better buckle up because there are people coming after you. Iowa, 10 turnovers in the game. Only three for GW. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg will get you caught up on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights. Plus a live look at action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Iowa back in the zone. Cool with the follow. It doesn't go. Settles comes away with it. This is Kingsbury. Man to man for George Washington. Cool paying much closer attention to Millard. Settles. Traffic. Let's see who they get. Oh, well, they got cool. Two on cool. Just settles at 6-7, just getting good position inside against Vaughn Jones. And Mike Jarvis actually telling the officials that he thought the foul should have been on Vaughn Jones. He doesn't want his big guy in foul trouble. Murray goes out. Ryan Bowen comes in. Now for Iowa. And the Sherikoff is going to get up off Mike Jarvis's bench and come in for cool. J.R. Koch, the 6'10 freshman from Morton, Illinois. He's waiting to, waiting to come in for just Settles. Settles has done an absolutely outstanding job in this game. He's just set the tone with his intensity. Rogers comes away with a rebound. Look how quick he's up the floor off the glass. That's seven for Jones. And Iowa with the turnover. Just as Jess Settles has set the tone for Iowa with his intensity, Shante Rogers with his quickness out and running on the fast break. And when George Washington has been able to get out in transition, they have been outstanding. 18 points on the break compared to eight for Iowa. Zone defense for Iowa. Going at the top of the zone would be a stiff target for Rodgers to shoot over the top. Shot clock under 15 seconds now. He walked. It's only the fourth turnover, though, for GW. Mike Jarvis says that's four too many. <laughs> Coaches only like it when the opposition turns the ball over. They're not interested in any turnovers for their side. Man to man for George Washington. It's both. Now they're going to get Rodgers. That's his second. Okay, Rodgers with 10 points to lead GW. 104 left to play. The Hawkeyes by one. And Rodgers is one of those guys. He needs to be careful, but more careful on the offensive end than the defensive end. Usually you can back off on defense and avoid fouls. Oh, we got everybody in the lane. Koch is going to get called for being in. Now they wave it off. Well, they 
said there was a double violation. Not only did Koch violate, but so did Misharikov. So therefore, it'll go the way of the possession arrow to be Iowa's ball. Down on the lower right-hand side of your screen, Misharikov and Koch both step in. That looks pretty si much simultaneously to me. Murray comes in now for Bowen. But nonetheless, Glasper loses the opportunity for the one-and-one. One. Rogers matched up against Kingsbury now. Rogers with those two fouls. And sometimes a guy in foul trouble will pick up the foul he doesn't want to get with a charging foul on offense. Glasper. Kingsbury takes the three. The Iowa three-point offense has been very, very solid in this first half. Slight differential between the shot clock and the play clock. 37-33. Iowa matching up. Evans. Yes, the three. To end the first half. And it was a good one. Iowa 37, GW 36. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Time at Tempe, and the Iowa Hawkeyes lead GW 37 to 36. Bill McAtee along with Dan Bonner. Let's take a look at the halftime numbers, and as you might expect, Iowa with the rebounding edge. And I think that's one of the big reasons why the Hawkeyes are leading by one at halftime. And the rebounding edge we're talking about, we mentioned that Iowa plus nine on the year. Here they are, 26 to 15. But for George Washington, fast break points. George Washington, 18 to 8 advantage, and one of the big reasons is Shantae Rogers. Rogers really got the George Washington attack going with plays like this, as we mentioned. Maybe got away with a little walk there, but aggressively driving on the inside. And the, the key for Iowa has been their intensity. Alexander Cool, number 45 in blue. You think it's easy rebounding against Jess Settles? Goes up and Settles just bangs him just enough to keep the wall ball away. Great intensity by Jess Settles. Those two folks are the parents of Jess Settles, Steve and Mary Settles. They grow them big and tough in Iowa. Nine boards, six points for Jess Settles. Russ Millard has 14 for the Hawkeyes. Shante Rogers, 10 points and five assists for GW. to see if the game can maintain the pace in the second half. It was very intense throughout the entire first half. Rogers. Adams. I win his own. Jones down low to Evans. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Tom Evans hit the three to end the first half and starts the second half with another three. And he's got 12. GW's leading scorer, averaging 18 and a half a game. I think a big factor for George Washington as we start the second half, Alexander Cool with two fouls. If he gets the third one early, that would really work to the advantage of the Hawkeyes. Woolrich. Woolrich has had a little success inside against Shante Rogers and knocks down the jumper. That's seven now for Woolrich. Rogers looking to push it against the Iowa pressure. Jones. Evans doesn't take it. Rogers. Inside, and he's 300 pounds. You're not going to move him once he gets in his position. That was an outstanding pass. GW 41 to 39. Murray lob pass into Settles. Eight now for 
for settles. He used his body and pump fakes to create some space for himself inside. And you notice Alexander Cool did not try to come and block the shot. Cool trying to be careful with those two fouls. Rogers. Evans now guarded by Woolrich. Takes it from way outside. And he's fouled. So Woolrich fouled him. Evans will get three shots. And Mike Jarvis was arguing for that particular play in the first half. Millard trying to keep Alexander Cool out of the low post area. But I mean, that's like bumping a brick wall. It's not going anywhere. Alexander Cool. Now that's three fouls now on Woolrich. So he'll have a seat. Chris Kingsbury will check in. Evans, a 74% free throw shooter. We're tied at 41. And he's going to have three since he was fouled in the act of shooting the three-point basket. Misses the second. <laughs> Everybody's taken off. Kingsbury started down the court. Evans only one of three. That trip to the line. GW by one. Glasper guarded by Rogers. The Colonials in a man-to-man, -man, and now Cool finds himself matched up against Murray. Settles. Dishes. GW comes away with it. Here comes Rogers. He'll stop and shoot. Knocks it down. Now George Washington with some pressure. Millard for three. Settles as Cool goes down. That's ten now for Settles. Is he tough for what? Rogers smacked away by Millard. Got a little too deep that time. Settles. Inside, and there's a foul on Kingsbury. Jess Settles just battles you every step of the way. Cool gets tangled up with Murray and falls down, and nobody blocks out Jess Settles. Now the foul is on Vaughn Jones. That's his second. Igor Masherikov has checked in now for GW. Greg Helmers for Iowa. Kingsbury, 79% free throw shooter. Masherikov in the first half was 0 for 7 for the Colonials. In too early, and now Bowen will check in. That was Kingsbury. The guy at the free throw line cannot go across the line until the ball hits the rim. Everybody else can go when the ball's released. But the guy at the line can't go until the ball hits the rim. Official Curtis Shaw said that Kingsbury got in too quickly. So we're tied at 44. Yes. Evans now with 16. A little pressure now from GW. Settles across the line. He'll take it. And he's got it back. How did he get the rebound? Travel. He's trying to call timeout, but he traveled with the ball. 14 turnovers now for Tom Davis Ball Club. Settles gets the shot off, then he gets his own rebound. Walked before he called the timeout. So he knew he was trapped, but he'd taken a couple of steps already. 14 turnovers for Iowa and only four for GW. to cool. Everybody collapses around him and somehow it goes in. That's 10 for and Cool. Helmers violates. He stepped in bounds with the basketball. Helmers went to take the ball out of bounds and he stepped in and didn't pass the ball. That has to drive Tom Davis crazy. 
So GW with a five-point lead, 16-01 left to play. The tremendous advantage that Iowa has gained on the boards. They've lost with their turnover. Sharkov and cut it! Foul is on Bowen, his first. For Yegor Masherikov from Minsk, Belarus. They'll try to convert the three-point play, and there you see the soft cast on Ryan Bowen's left hand. There's a timeout on the floor. GW 51, Iowa 44. George Washington has come back from an 11-point deficit in the first half, now lead by seven. 15-57, left to play. And Kwame Evans has gotten his three-point stroke in gear, and that has really helped the George Washington offense. Iowa with four turnovers here in the second half, none for George Washington. And they barely get it across the line. Woolrich will set it by Rogers. And the man defense for the Colonials. Woolrich. Battle for it. Woolrich comes away with it. Down low. This is Millard. Gets Masherikov in the air and converts. Right back comes Rogers. Stops and hits. That's 14 now. For five foot three, Shante Rogers. The little guy is putting on a show. Settles is cut off by Cool. No foul is called. GW comes away with it. 53-46, under 15 minutes remaining. Boy, and Tom Davis really got up and down the sidelines over there. He was very upset. Millard and Cool really pushing one another. Woolrich streaking down the floor. Jeff Settles bangs into Alexander Cool, and Cool really does just stand there. Now watch Tom Davis at the top of your picture come into the picture. He got up from that his seat there, close to the scorer's table. He got down there quickly. George Washington now with a nine-point lead. Murray is on Rogers. Lock pass. Last touch by Iowa. That is a very difficult pass to make. Just didn't quite get it high enough. And that's what Mike Jarvis is telling him. Hey, make the easy pass. Don't need that one. Mosherikov. Gets the roll. We talked about the inside power of the Hawkeyes in this second half. The inside power of the Colonials taking the center stage. GW's largest lead. Woolwich breaks the press. Paul May Evans bounced off a Russ Millard screen at half court. This game hadn't lost any of its intensity. Woolwich with a quick first step, swatted away by Cole. J.J. Braid, I believe. Iowa wants goaltending. Braid steps in and tries to take the charge, but Alexander Cool. Woolrich gets by, but that's a pretty tough road to hoe in there. Lots of bodies. And the last one is 7 feet 1 and weighs 300 pounds. That's three on Braid, and that was a great example of the agility of Alexander Cool. 7-1. A sophomore. First doesn't go. And we were talking about Cool yesterday, and they were telling us that he is so flexible that he can actually do cheerleader splits at 7 1. Well, he'd be one big cheerleader. Be a pretty tall pyramid if they. Well, he could be the whole pyramid. They wouldn't would need out. anymore. Just get cool. GW by 11, 13.40 left to play. Try to pressure Rogers. Lobs it into Cool. Cool tried to get it to Masherikov. Braid is there. Doesn't get.
get the roll. There's Masharikov. Knocks it down. GW by 13. The Brave just picked up a foul. And that is four on Brave. The Braid has been a significant factor in helping George Washington maintain the pace at which they've been playing. He has been outstanding in transition and outstanding on the defensive end. But Masherikov and Cool the last couple of minutes, Bill, they have dominated the inside. Touch. They'll go to the air. Kwame Evans just took it away. Koch got in there and bounced off Cool a couple of times. You've got to be impressed with the way Alexander Cool holds his ground here. He doesn't move in. Koch bounces off of him a couple of times, but Cool doesn't hit him. And finally, Kwame Evans comes in and takes the ball. Slobs it into Millard. Now Kingsbury will take a three and knocks it down. And that is a big basket and an important basket for Iowa. They're not getting anything on the interior. Kingsbury can give them a spark on the perimeter. Kingsbury has 12. Under 13 minutes remaining. 10-point towards Washington lead. Millard is doing everything he can to move Cool out of there and is having no luck at all. They're letting him play inside. Cool. Turn around. He's fouled from behind. It doesn't go. What a great catch by Cool. That was a bullet that Vaughn Jones zipped in there. Cool holds himself in position. Millard is banging him. That's a 245-pound guy. Millard can't move him at all, and then the ball comes right to him. Catch and turn. That's two on Bowen now. So Cool will step to the line, a 67% foul shooter. He's also, by the way, an academic All-American. He has a uh, 3.5 GPA. An 11-point George Washington lead. The Belarus connection has been dominant in the second half. Poole has 14. Kingsbury, Evans takes a swipe at it. Now settles. Back to Kingsbury, and Woolwich will reset the offense. Bowen down low to settles. Got Poole in the air. Underneath it won't go. Kingsbury comes away with it. Looking for a foul on Jones. They don't get it. Tom Davis is all over the official. Curtis Shaw telling him to sit down and be quiet. Looks like Millard has their attention. Kingsbury from way outside. And Cool's going to pick up the foul there, coming over the back of Settle. That's the third on Cool. That was simply a bad decision. He swatted down very hard at that ball. It looked like a foul, so that's what the officials call. 11.54 left to play. George Washington leads by 12 in a game that's been a banger from the start. Vaughn Joan and Chris Kingsbury, they're going after one another, and Tom Davis is not happy at all about what's going on, complaining to the official, and here the official's going to step in, and right there tells him, Coach, calm down. GW is shooting 83% here in the second half as Settles lays it up and in. So a 10-point George Washington lead. And Alexander Cool out of the game with those fouls. Evans. Bowler with the block. Back comes Iowa. Kingsbury. The three won't go. Jones comes now with it. The outlet to Evans. He'll jam it. Nope. Off the glass. That's 18 now for Kwame Evans. What a great outlet pass by John, by Vaughn Jones. George Washington really getting it out of transition. And you can credit little Shante Rogers with that. Just settles, get him, got himself trapped down on the baseline, Bill, and he called the 22nd timeout. Timeout on the 
the floor and we'll return to Tempe in a moment. Back at the University Activity Center in Tempe, Arizona. Mike Jarvis has seen his GW squad come from 11 points down and they now lead 63 to 51. Stands is Connie Jarvis looking on, a little nervous despite the 12 point lead. Mosherikov comes away with it, and Mosherikov has been a huge factor in the second half. Rogers will slow it down and set the offense. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Evans winding down. He gets it off and nails it. The three. That's 21 now for Kwame Evans. Woolwich. In traffic, Iowa will keep it. And the scrambling George Washington defense has really disrupted Iowa's offensive flow. Boy, what in the world is going on in there? <laughs> it continues to be intense, and it continues to be physical, and Ferdinand Williams just bowled over Kenyon Murray. Williams, the 6'10 uh, junior, he is huge. He walks. He's trying to get around Williams. He's a thick presence there in the paint. That is only the sixth turnover by George Washington. But it comes at a critical moment, the pass right to Kingsbury. What a good play to get the ball back to Murray. They attack Mishirikov and draw the foul. Iowa has not been able to force many turnovers, but they cashed in on that one. 66-54. Here comes Rogers, a little nifty behind the back. No look pass. Off the glass. Shot by Vaughn Jones. And that is nine now for Jones. He's very back to settles. They collapse in the middle. Seven, take it. Now back to Warwick. We'll reset things. Slapped away by Rogers. He saves it. Such quickness. Rogers will back it up. 14 point GW lead. Jess Settles matched up against Kwame Evans, who fumbles the ball. Looked like he was loading up for three. Downloaded Jones, and he lays it in. Vaughn Jones, the senior, a really steadying influence for this Colonial Club. Here goes Woolrich. Battle underneath, and that was a nice move by Murray. Nine now for Kenyon Murray. Williams. Take a look at the shooting this half. GW, 14 of 17. Oh, it's not easy to understand why they've got a 14-point lead. They haven't missed any shots. And 50% normally is not too bad. <laughs> it's nothing compared to 14 of 17. Colonials taking their time. Rogers way outside. He gets his own rebound. The three. Evans now has 24. And the rebound by Shante Rogers made that possible. The little guy is playing big in Tempe. The Colonials of George Washington with the big lead. And you know when a guy's five foot three, I guess you don't, you figure you don't really need to block him out. Well, think again. Shante Rogers with the rebound. The great strength to kick it out to Kwame Evans. Evans now with 24 points. Shante Rogers at five feet three has taken over the game, and Kwame Evans 
things look good when the ball goes in the goal. GW shooting 79% now in the second half, 56% overall compared to 47% for Iowa. That's an air ball, Cox underneath, Evans slaps it away. Could he save it? That was one of those situations where the official called White and pointed in the wrong direction. So they've got that straightened out. 8.04 left to play. GW 73, Iowa 56. And now there's an issue with the shot clock. The question is whether or not they should have reset the 35-second shot clock. And the answer is yes, they should have. The ball hit the rim, and then nobody had possession. So the shot clock reset at 35. The settles comes back in after getting a blow. Cox goes out. Well, it's time for the Iowa Hawkeyes to make a run right here. This is Settles, and if they're going to come back, they're going to do it on the back of Jeff Settles. Sherikoff trying to get out of bounds, and Settles so aggressive won't let him. Evans gets it to Rogers, and Rogers quickly up the floor. That doesn't go. Murray with the rebound. Back comes Iowa. Warwich. Kicks it out to Settles. He doesn't take the three. Scoops underneath. Rebound George Washington. Mesherikov. And I'll tell you what, Mesherikov has been a huge factor in this second half. Evans didn't have his feet set. The Colonials don't need to shoot the ball that quickly. Woolwich underneath. All right, we're going to squeeze into what we call our double box here as we take a look at the last 32 seconds out in Richmond. Texas Tech, the three in the east, had a 15-point lead in the second half, but Northern Illinois wouldn't quit. Down to five, Texas Tech with the ball, and we'll be hearing the uh, call there from Ted Robinson and Larry Farmer. The number three seed in the east, Texas Tech, led by nine at the half, led by 15 midway through this half, but the 14th seed, Northern Illinois Huskies, with a late run, closed to within three. It's now a five-point Tech lead. And Texas Tech has the ball in backboard. Shot clock is off. And Northern having no choice. They need to foul somebody quickly, but Sasser... One of three on the floor for Tech's pretty good foul shooter. 72 percent. Number 41, the point guard. And you're right, the this clock is, is your biggest enemy is now. Is if you're Northern Illinois, you've got to attempt to make a steal. And if you don't get the steal foul right away, both teams. Texas Tech now in the bonus, so they'll be shooting two. And on the next foul, if they foul, Northern Illinois will also be shooting two. Two shots. Sasser shooting two, missing the first. Now, if he makes this one, you're down six. You're two three-point shots away. You still want to push the ball up the court, look to get something close to the basket. But if not, look for the draw and kick, the kick out for the over three-point shot. Then you've got to foul right away again if you're Northern Illinois. And the Huskies have no timeouts left. There's a drive. And that actually was the right man for Northern Illinois to foul as Tony Batie caught the inbounds pass. At least by the numbers, he's the right guy. 62% foul shooter. Well, Boston College makes it 5-0 for the Big East. Wake Forest, the first ACC team to win. George Washington. How big on Iowa. Here is Texas Tech by four. And Batie was one for two at the line tonight. Shooting two. You missed that first one. I tell you what, that second one becomes a lot tougher to make. Straight as an arrow, but the T's got to soften that up. This is 12th point. Northern Illinois down five. Holman for three. It's a career high 28 for Coleman. It's a two point game. And they foul Sasser right away. Through the year, lost a third starter to injury, and still won 20 games to get to the tournament. And they are giving Texas Tech everything tonight. Well, Coleman sprinting down the sideline and really didn't make a move, just put on the brakes. That freed him up from the defense, and Coleman able to regain his balance and then shoot the three. 
watch the reaction from the Texas Tech bench. And there's the reaction from the Northern bench. <laughs> Coleman has scored 24 points in the second half. Northern, though, just lost Mike Hartke to fouls. Junior just fouled out with 16 points tonight. Well, Texas Tech may put three players on Coleman when Northern comes back up the floor. Where Sasser can eliminate a lot of the suspense here if he can make both foul shots. If he makes both foul shots, then it's a mute point. But if he makes one and misses one, you've got an opportunity to tie this game with a three-point shot. If he misses, he had a chance to tie with a deuce or win it with a three. His 20th point tonight. Northern Illinois has no timeouts. That is clutch. Jason Sasser. And Logan's going to need a miracle for Reese Patterson. Up for three. He got it. 1.3. And a baseball pass. This will end it. The basket doesn't matter. Texas Tech survives by one. So the three in the East hangs on. One point win for the Red Raiders, 29 and one on the year. Back out to Tempe with GW up 12. 542 left to play. George Washington leading Iowa 73 to 61. GW is in the dark blue uniforms. Iowa in the white. Iowa with a lead up to 11 points in the first half. GW came back. Iowa led by one at halftime. But turnovers have been a problem for the Hawkeyes. Kingsbury's going to pick up the foul. And Iowa's actually on a bit of a comeback here. They trailed by 17 just a few moments ago. The score was 73 to 56. And they've run off six points in a row. George Washington hasn't really gotten any good opportunities on the offensive end. Get it into Kwame Evans, and he'll give it to Shante Rogers. Five twenty left to play. Jones cool with the foul, and he makes it. Great position from Alexander Cool, and that's 16 points. Woolwich, travel. 20 turnovers now for Iowa. Look at our game summary. GW, 24 fast break points. Millard, 16 points. We see 24 for Kwame Evans. That's taken away by Murray. Oliver Cool. be a foul on Cool. Cool tried to get in position to draw the charge, but he turned. When you're 7-1, it's hard to slide over there. And that's four fouls on Alexander Cool, one of the few George Washington turnovers tonight. Kenyon Murray doing a great job. Now he's just going to attack Alexander Cool, and at the last minute, Cool turns to the side. And Kenyon Murray knows his team still has a shot in this game. He can cut it to 10 with a free throw. Murray has 12. Three-point play. 5.02 left to play. GW 75, Iowa 65. Here's Alexander Cool. He'll stay in with four. And that's thrown away. Good pressure from Iowa. Mike Jarvis, not a happy man right at the moment. His team was in control of this game, but Iowa has seized the momentum. Settles. Knocks down the three. And it's suddenly a seven-point game. Just under five minutes remaining. They'll get it to Rodgers. He's played an outstanding game. 
away by Murray. This game is very, very physical. 75-68 GW. 20-second timeout taken by Mike Jarvis. And at this point, I think Mike Jarvis is just asking his kids, telling them they need to be tough out there. Winner here will take on the winner of our next game, either Arizona or the Crusaders of Valparaiso. Already today, Santa Clara and Kansas have advanced. They'll play on Sunday. And this has been a game that has featured a number of twists and turns. Iowa, after trailing by 17, has outscored the Colonials 12 to 2. And they've done it with intense defensive pressure that's thoroughly disrupted anything George Washington's been trying to do on offense. GW will bring it in. Jones. Has to take a timeout. 4.43 left in Tempe. GW is the 11th seed in the West, and right now they lead the number six seed, Iowa, 75 to 68. And once again, George Washington will try to get it in, and they do to Rogers. There's a whistle. Settles kicked the ball. That's true. <laughs> Settles has kicked the ball on the inbounds pass. Well, this time they get it to Braid off the screen by Cool, who has four fouls. Well, over, the last, over the last four minutes, George Washington hasn't gotten anything on the offensive end. Jones spins. There's the whistle. That's the third now on, on Settles. In this situation, late in the, a close ball game, an important ball game, Mike Jarvis Certainly doesn't mind the ball being in the hands of his senior, Vaughn Jones. Jones and Mike Jarvis both thought he was shooting. Great. We'll back it out. Give it to Rogers. 20 left to play. Great. Haven't heard from Kwame Evans in a while. Rogers. He was trying to pass it behind his back to Evans out at the top of the key. Fortunate to get it back. Six seconds left on the shot clock. That doesn't go. Cool still battles for it. And that's five on Alexander Cool. Cool misses the jump shot. Then he, get, he keeps it alive once. He just gets his arm tangled up with Jess Settles. That's why the foul was called. He wasn't called for being over the back, but as he brought his arm up, he got tangled up with Settles. And that is a big, big factor for George Washington. Cool not only had those 16 points, was a presence on the inside, but he was critical to George Washington in breaking the Iowa press. So Masherikov will check in, the 6'8 freshman. And this scoring drop for George Washington. Foul trouble. Braid has four. Woolrich and Settles both with three. Settles hits them both from 355 left to play. GW's lead is now five. Settles parents obviously very pleased with the goings on right here. Evans to Braid. Rogers will set it up. Jones, Rogers, Evans, Masherikov, and Braid on the floor for GW. For Iowa, settles guards Jones, and he nails the turnaround jumper. Big basket. Woolrich, battle for it. It's loose. 
Rogers comes away with it, tries to shoot. Was he fouled? They got settles. That's his fourth. Woolridge trying to dribble through pressure, and Kwame Evans knocks the ball away. Vaughn Jones, or excuse me, J.J. Braid squirts it out. Shante Rogers bounces off Jeff Settles. He'll go to the line for two. Fourth personal on Settles. Rogers will shoot the one and one. Won't go. Murray comes comes down with it. So Iowa now trailing by seven. Woolrich. Now Ballard almost lost it. These teams continue to really go at one another. Woolrich. Oh, look how high Rogers got in the air. It's Rogers. Oh, they're going to call Rogers for the fight. That's three fouls. That's his third. Woolrich has had some success taking the ball into the lane against Shante Rogers. He's been able to get it up over him. Braid with the help that causes the shot to be missed. Shante Rogers and Kenyon Murray battling one another. They call the foul on the little guy. Murray is 6'5", and Rogers is 5'3". Six-point George Washington lead. 14 now for Murray. That lead was 17. Iowa has slowly cut into it. Millard now gets his own rebound over Masharikov. And without cool in the game, Iowa starting to get to the offensive boards once again. What a comeback by the Iowa Hawkeyes. They look to be dead. Kingsbury. Millard gets the first shot off and misses it, and now he gets a second. And watch him put his body on Masharikov, creates some room for himself and scores inside. Tough, powerful on the inside. Russ Millard, Jeff Settles. from the line so far. That doesn't go. And George Washington has missed the front ends of three one-and-ones. Well, how about this? The crowd won the foul. They won't get it. Rogers comes away with it. Alexander Cool missed two free throws, and then the last two guys who've been to the line have missed the front end of the one-and-one. One. Evans. Calling for the ball in the corner. Bowen matched up against him. Bowen. Seven seconds on the shot clock. That doesn't go. Settles comes away with it. Here comes Iowa. Three on two. Kingsbury. Yes. Two-point GW lead. Murray. Settles. and the folks from Iowa asking for goaltending on the play. Collar from Tom Davis getting a little tight now. Under George, two minutes. George Washington's really hurt themselves at the free throw line down the stretch. Settles. Well, that could be the difference. Only six of 17. Settles gets them both. And Iowa has cut the lead to one. Check that. We are tied. So Settles has fought all the way back from 17 points down. George Washington will be looking for Kwame Evans in this situation. Well, that's a very tough pass. Millard steals it. And here comes Woolrich. Nails it. Iowa by two.
The Iowa Hawkeyes closing with the rush. They lead by two. This is the basket by Rulrich over Misharikov that puts the Hawkeyes ahead. Iowa on a 23-4 run over the last seven minutes of the game. They've erased a 17-point deficit. Rodgers to Evans. Back now to Rodgers. Under a minute left to play. Evans loses the ball. Kingsbury gets it to Woolwich. Stolen by GW. And here comes Rodgers. Now they get Millard. And now George Washington is going to have to do what they've struggled doing the entire second half. The Colonials only three for ten from the free throw line in the second half. And that's only the ninth team foul on Iowa. So this is still a one and one. The last two one and ones, George Washington has missed the front end. Well, Jones is only one of four. But he's good there. If he makes these to tie the game, Iowa will have the ball, obviously, with the chance to go ahead. 7.6 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Get it to Woolwich. She's guarded by Braid. Woolwich quickly across the line. Tom Davis just tells him what he wants him to run. Shot clock at 15. Woolwich watches reaching in. It's a dangerous play. Woolwich steps up. Walk on Millard with the rebound. Now Tom Davis wants the timeout. The offensive rebound again. 5.9 seconds remaining. Five point nine seconds remaining here in Tempe. And Iowa will have a chance to win it. There's the timeout situation. 79-79. Settles will inbounds the ball. Rob it into Millard. He loses it. And is fouled. And it's called on J.J. Braid. Well, check that. Kwame Evans. That was significant because that, because that would have been the fifth for Braid. Millard, an 80% free throw shooter. Three seconds left. Iowa leads by one. from Russ Millard as his two free throws have given the Hawkeyes a two-point lead. GW with no timeouts remaining. And George Washington with the pressure trying to make, or excuse me, I with the pressure trying to make George Washington run time off the clock. Well, they get it to Rodgers. He takes it. Won't go, and that's it. Rodgers didn't get a very good shot off, but he got the ball within shooting range. 
What a comeback by the Hawkeyes of Iowa. There's the Iowa reaction. And Mike Jarvis. Oh, so close. He came back from 11 down in the first half, had a 17. It's your classic matchup of...